absolutely swimming in AI video models. In fact, I think we might even have more than image generation models at this point. We've got Runway, Luma, Hilo's Minimax, Mochi, LTX, both Sora and Google's VO are both pending to be released, hopefully imminently. We've still got Animate Diff, which started everything. And now we have the release of Tencent's Huangyuan video model. And with this release, Tencent has gone above and beyond. This model is not only potentially the largest video model that's been released, coming in at 13 billion parameters, making it large enough to potentially compete with the likes of Runway and Luma, but it's also open source, meaning that the weights and the method by which this model was put together has been made available for all of us to use and tinker with. Meaning that the community could come out with incredible features such as IP adapter, LoRa, ControlNet, and much more detailed workflows allowing us to do all kinds of things with this model. Furthermore, the model uses a couple of new techniques that we haven't seen before in video models. What makes this model revolutionary beyond the fact that it's 13 billion parameters is the fact that it uses a dual clip system where it uses a clip model and a large language model, specifically Llama, to take the prompt and break it down into its understanding and, and latent space to create a deep understanding of what we're trying to prompt. The fact that it uses two models as well allows it to double check its own interpretation of what the prompt is doing. Putting it simply, what this means is that in theory, the Hunyuan video model is able to understand not only longer prompts, but more detailed prompts, potentially allowing it to marry unconventional concepts and ideas into workable pieces of video, as you can see in some of these examples here. Furthermore, the other really cool thing that, that Hunyuan is doing is it's using something called a 3D vid. And essentially what's happening here is, if I've understood this correctly, the Hunyuan model is able to take inputs and in the process of compressing it into latent space, it tries to create a 3D understanding of the images and videos that are going into the model. Now, I'm not sure if this is also done during training, but it looks like when you're feeding in an image in the image to video feature or a video in the video to video feature, it tries to understand the entire 3D space of that image or video so that when it tries to apply the prompt to it, it's able to maintain a certain level of cohesion and real world physics very similar to the stuff that we saw featured in Sora when that model was first announced. If you remember, people were freaking out at how the model could have potentially been creating 3D worlds to create these videos. It looks like Hunyuan is doing something very similar and they've taken this technology and given it to us open source. So some very, very cool stuff coming out of Tencent. Now, the current version of the model that they've released is only text to video. I will cover the Comfy UI installation in a little bit where Kijai has created a wrapper and apparently is able to do image to video and video to video with the wrapper. However, that seems to be unofficially supported by Tencent at this time. But what they do have planned to come out are some really cool additions to the model, which could make it even even more powerful than simply being a 13 billion parameter model. One of the really cool things that they have coming is voice driven image to video. So if we look at these examples here, they've got these images along with a prompt and they have fed in a audio file and the model is taking that audio file and animating the characters to it. We can see some examples over here. Now, this is nothing too revolutionary. We've already seen this talked about a lot. There's a few other open source models that do things like this. So that's pretty cool. They're also planning to include video dubbing or effectively what Foley artists do, which is taking a silent video and applying audio to it. This could be really great for AI generated video because many of the models just give you the video without any of the audio. So it'll be really nice to see this built into it. I think 11 Labs has something that's already similar to this and we can see a couple of examples here. We can see how in that video, the model added in the sound of the waterfall. Here we've got a car engine. And finally, it looks like they're also going to be adding in some live portrait style features where we can see here that a video is driving an image to create an animation, but it doesn't stop there. They're also adding in their own support for open pose. And we can see here a open pose animation and the statue turning into this uh, dancing video. And here's another example of a live portrait style 
implementation. Now, everything I've shown you here is not anything that's new. We've seen these things featured before. We've seen other models that have tried to replicate this and allow you to take either a driving video or a voice and put it all together. We've got live portrait that does this. However, we've not had all of this put together into a single model. So if the Tencent team can do this and Hunyuan can do all of these things all at once, it's going to create some very streamlined workflows and really simplify the entire video creation process. So I'm very excited to see how to use this. Now, if you want to take advantage of this model in its current official format, you can check out Kaiju Gen. It's a little side project of mine to be able to quickly and easily generate images and videos across a variety of different models without having to pay a subscription fee for a whole bunch of different platforms. On Kaiju Gen, you can if you want to, but it's also got pay as you go. And all the videos I'm showing you here are created with Kaiju Gen. I am working on adding in more models and functionality, so check it out. I'd love to hear back and hear what you think. Using Kaiju Gen also helps support the channel. And if you're a Patreon subscriber, I've sent a few credits your way. So go ahead and check your inboxes on Patreon. Alternatively, if you want to run this on hardware that you control, there are a few things to keep in mind. The Hunyuan video model is able to output video at 720i, meaning it's 720 by 1280 pixels. The Hunyuan model is able to generate at 720i pixels, so that's 720 by 1280 pixels. However, it requires 60 gigabytes of memory. You can shrink your resolution down to 544 by 960, but that's still going to require 45 gigabytes of video memory, something that I think most users are not going to have. Now, I do have a solution for consumer grade GPUs at 24 gigs or below, which I'll cover in just a little while. However, I don't recommend using it. If you really want to run this on your own hardware, the best recommendation I can give is to use RunPod and rent out one of their higher end GPUs or get two or three for 4090s, chain them together, and you'll be able to run this at a couple of dollars an hour. If that's something that you're interested in, I am working on getting a template up and running so that you can run this on RunPod with one click. However, if you really want to run this locally, you're lucky enough to have your own GPU or you want to try running it on a 16 or 24 gigabyte GPU, Kijai has come out with some comfy UI wrappers and we'll go into the installation briefly. Now, if you want to install this locally, there are two ways to go about it. Unfortunately, the Kijai wrappers are not available on the custom nodes manager. This might change by the time that you watch this video. So before you do any of the other steps, I suggest you just come on in here and check if there's a Hunyuan video custom node set. If you don't see it, you will need to do the manual installation. However, if it's there, that's great. You probably just need to install that and then download a couple of models, which I'll show you in just a little bit. If you don't see it here, like myself, you've got two options to do it. Now, the first option is to do it via the Comfy UI Manager menu. I recommend this if you're using Pinocchio or if you're using Comfy UI Portable. However, your mileage may vary. The first thing that you want to do is install via Git URL. And the reason we want to do it this way is that the Comfy UI Portable or Pinocchio create a virtual environment when you're using Comfy UI. So installing it via the manager makes sure that any dependencies are installed within that virtual environment, which we will need to do later on. So go ahead and drop in the Git file over here, drop that in and hit OK. And you'll get a notification when it's installed. You will get a notification to restart. Go ahead and do that. Once you've restarted, Started, come back to the Comfy UI Manager menu and you'll need to install some pip packages. I forgot to mention earlier, this entire process is highly recommended if you're using Linux. If you're using Windows, there are some issues with installing some of the pips that we're going to do now, especially Sage Attention and Triton. I will leave a link in the description below where you can try and get around that. However, from what I've seen, even if you use that workaround, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to generate anything with Windows. For Mac, this should theoretically work. However, I don't know how Macs are going to perform on this. If you have an M3 or an M4 with an audacious amount of RAM, please go ahead and try this and let us know what the results are like. Theoretically, if you've got your Mac Mini or MacBook Pro maxed out with 192 gigabytes of RAM, you should be able to run this with little to no problem. So let me know if your M3 or M4 can just destroy this model. Coming back to this, the pip installs that we need to do are flash underscore attention, Sage. Again, I will put this down in the description below so that you don't need to remember it. Go ahead and hit OK, and that will install the pip for you. You might need to restart once again. Now, 
if you encountered the security pop-up or you don't want to use the manager, the other way to go and install it is to go into your Comfy UI folder, go into your custom nodes and open up a terminal in here. On Mac, you can do it by opening it in terminal. And in case you're wondering, I record on a Mac, so I'll be showing you how to install it on a Mac, but this Mac cannot run Hunyuan. Uh, all the videos I'm showing you, I have run it either on Kaiju Gen or on my Linux machine, which I don't have set up to record on. But the process is the same. So just in case you were wondering. So once you're in the folder, go ahead and do git clone the URL and that should download it for you. Then you're gonna wanna go into the folder that has just been created. So in this case, it'll be CD Comfy UI and just do a pip install dash R requirements TXT. You can go ahead and run that pip install and that should install the additional dependencies. Make sure that you turn on your virtual environment. If you're on Python, use a Python Ven, or if you're on Conda, activate your Conda virtual environment. Once you've installed that, either by using the manager or using the terminal, as I've just shown you, you can go ahead and grab one of the workflows linked below. Now, before you can get started, you'll notice that there are three nodes that we need to pay attention to. The first one down here at the bottom will automatically download the models for you. So you don't need to do anything there, just select the one that you want. However, for the other nodes, we're gonna have to bring our own models. Run over to the Kijai Hunyuan video, Comfy Hugging Face, not the official Hunyuan. It took me a minute to figure this out. Anyway, links will be down below. And we've got a few models here to select from. We've got the two primary Hunyuan models and we've got two VAEs down here. TGI has gone ahead and created some FP8 versions of these models. So if you're running on a 24 or in fact anything lower than 48 gigabytes of VRAM, you're going to want to be using the FP8 and the BF16 versions of the models. You can place the model files into your models slash diffusion models folder and the VAE file into your models VAE file, just like you would do with any VAE file. And that's pretty much it. Once you've done that, you can load up the models in the respective nodes, drop in your prompt and you're good to go. So how does the model actually perform? Well, I have been running a bunch of tests on on Kaiju Gen, and I have to say the results are very good. I'll have the uh, result running up on the screens along with the prompt, but I've tried a couple of environmental ones like these lava shots showing some very cool panning shots of this volcanic environment, although this particular one has this weird droplet kind of coming in at the beginning. I tried some action shots and I, this is where the model starts to do a couple of weird things. You can see here in the snowboarding video, the snowboarder is kind of doing some wacky jumps, right? But you know, the snow looks absolutely amazing. There is a great level of consistency throughout the video. It's pretty clear. Uh, we don't see any weird warping or, or deformation or anything like that. Uh, this one was a lot of fun. A giant rubber ducky going down a flooded street. I had a lot of fun with that one. Quite cool is that the model is able to handle anime and animation somewhat well. This was supposed to be a realistic shot, but it ended up coming out as a cartoon. And I, I do love the fact that it's got that 90s cartoon vibe and it's pretty decently animated. Although the uh, the little girl in the bottom right kind of doesn't have some weirdness. So I have noticed that weird weirdness and warping tends to happen more with animated videos. Uh, we can see here there is a, an anime fight attempt where things are to go a little bit weird, but for the most part, it's not bad. The background maintains that kind of consistency, right? Like, like if we look here again, you can see how the camera pans away and then pans back and that column is still there in the background, right? The characters are still very consistent even if their actions are kind of weird. What the model did do very well is I, I told it to just create a woman talking enthusiastically about something. And although the video clip is short, this is, a, this is great. And when they add in the live portrait like features, if we can do video to video where someone can be speaking and then drive another video, this already creates a great output. So it'll be very interesting to see how we're able to combine the two. And here's another version of that in a portrait format, which came out very, very well. Now, the big challenge here is going to be how do we create multiple video clips with the same character. That's something that's gonna be very difficult to do without either Allura or image to image. As with image to image, we can use Allura to create multiple images of the same character and almost create those scenes uh, one after another. Whereas with text to video, that's a little bit more challenging. You might be able to by using a, 
very detailed prompting and the same seed, but there's no guarantee that could happen. However, if we look at some of the examples from Hun Yuan, we can see here that, you know, in these clips, it's definitely the same character that we're seeing across different camera scenes. And I, I doubt that they were all made in one generation. So there must be a way to do it. It could be with some of the new features that are coming out. There's also the fact that, as I mentioned before, this is open source, which creates a lot of exciting opportunities for us to create workflows and tools on top of this that could allow us to have those consistent characters, meaning that we can start to actually get into advanced storytelling with these AI technologies. If you do get a chance to try out the model and have come up with some interesting videos, come by the Discord and drop what you're doing. We love to see what you're doing, and it's a great opportunity to discuss what's working, what's not working with the model. And if you're one of the lucky few who has a Mac powerful enough to run this, definitely do come by. I want to hear all about it. It's an exciting time for anybody who's interested in AI video. And as 2024 draws to a close, I can only imagine what 2025 is going to be. Is it going to be the year of video? Will we finally see Google Vio and Sora come out? And how will they fare against all the new releases that have come out? Sora is going to have to be really impressive for having waited this long from the announcement to its actual release. Do you think that Sora is going to be able to keep up with the hype? Let me know down below. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And if you really want to support us, please come by the Patreon. We have exclusive workflows and every once in a while we're able to drop in a few goodies. Like for example, if you want to try out Kaiju Gen, we are giving away a few credits to Patreon subscribers. So keep an eye out on your inbox if you are a Patreon subscriber. There might be something in there waiting for you. Finally, I'm really interested in doing a deep dive and comparative of all the AI video models. However, covering all of those subscriptions can be a little bit expensive. So your support on Patreon helps make videos like that happen. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.